one of the, the titles of our uh, session today was ethics and equality. Um, and, and uh, you know, what does that mean in this context? We've heard a little bit here, uh, you know, we, we talked about this. And so Corinne, I'm going to come to you first. What, what does this mean as, as uh, from, from a, uh, a driving uh, two words that are um, front and center today in a number of different contexts, in a number of different parts of the world? But what does it mean here as it relates to this well, these words are very important in this context because we don't see for now, at least in the political space, AI driving more equality. I mean, we see the creation of digital elites. I mean, as in every other continent, any other continent, by the way, but there's a, you know, a growing divide by the, between those who can use AI in particular for their uh, political purposes uh, and those who can't, and civil society not having the same kind of skills and, and resources uh, uh, as governments have in the use of AI. And that, for instance, in we've seen use of very sophisticated disinformation campaigns uh, during elections. With the use, I mean, Oxford University has a project on the technology and democracy that has really described extensively the use of trolls and, and, and social media bots and so on by some uh, governing parties huh? in context. And that's not something that a lot of actors can master at the moment. So there is really this imbalance and this asymmetry that we've discussed already between uh, those who can and who have really very quickly not either developed their own skills for political purposes or are resorting to what we call digital mercenaries to do their, their, their work. And we know that, for instance, a lot of governments uh, in many countries, not only in Africa, are resorting to um, AI-powered uh, surveillance tools, uh, such as facial recognition and so on. And uh, sometimes they just pay for the services of companies that are based elsewhere, you know? So this is what we're seeing in terms of equity, equality, uh, and ethics is, is actually for now a worrying trend in this growing divide by those who can use AI for sometimes nefarious purposes and those who can't. Nanjira, do you agree with Corinne's assessment? Well, yeah. I mean, and, you know, it's always when the rubber meets the road in practice that uh, the real theater of what we, we put together as recommendations come up. But I like to say, let's complicate um, the equation and sit without trouble because that's that's the real meat of what actually happens after we recommend stuff. Now, I think a lot of our conversations about what to do, just do not, and especially where technology is involved, just do not accommodate this real messy theater that is our coexistence, right? Um, and so, and terminology has been really interesting. Uh, how terminology is used in one region may not necessarily apply. Uh, digital mercenaries might be somebody else's digital dissident. I'm um, just, you know, as one random example there. I just say with everything that we come to, you know, just before we said this is the way forward, I'm always a fan of complicating it by sitting with it a bit more and saying, well, whose perspective has not, re has not been represented in how we're normalizing or popularizing a way of thinking about stuff? How can we go back to that? And how can we, you know, how how can we create more truly inclusive ways of thinking about um, how these different issues and technologies as we're designing them and deploying them um, could actually also mitigate the harms that we always have. We, we, we have to get to a point where we don't always have these typical tropes of, oh, regulation, uh, you know, uh, slows down innovation, or, uh, you know, we only think about ethics after the fact that a harm has been has been meted out on people, and especially because uh, this pandemic has made technology so intimate in our lives. No, it, it, for, for sure. All right, Warren. Yeah, and, and I think for me, always, you know, the, the place to start are provocative questions. I mean, when you when you think about um, you know, aspects, when, when I think about AI design, there are a couple of things that I think about. I think about validation, I think about security, I think about verification, I think about control. Uh, and under validation, um, you know, this issue of, hey, did I design the right system? Is it based on the right assumptions? Uh, 
how does it actually improve the situation and, and for all stakeholders. And I think this is part of the opportunities when we take a multi-stakeholder view of both the supply side and the demand side, it gives us a better way to start thinking about balancing, balancing some, of, uh, some of these inequalities and systems of verification. And I think the other aspect is to understand that this is only the tip of the iceberg uh, and, and it's going to get more complex. It, the, the flywheel is just going to spin faster. And I mean, right now we're talking about AI and when we overlay it with things like um, you know, quantum computing and, and what, what quantum computing will do uh, you know, to, to an algorithmic uh, organization, it, it, it starts creating even further imbalances. And so, so the thing that I think, I, and, and you know, the tools that we have to use are the tools we humans use plan, conversations. And the issue with the planning is the ability to think in multiple time horizons, because I often find that there's an imbalance between exploration and exploitation. And when we appreciate the fact that we can think about both the explorative aspects and the exploitative aspects, that those multiple time horizons gives us a completely different view. And, and the thing that we know from a strategic perspective is that most organizations, because of the, not having an appreciation of their life stage, always underexplore or overexploit. And all of those lead to pathologies. And that ability to appreciate your context. And once again, it's about being able to have sensing mechanisms and that ability to have sensing mechanisms and to consistently reflect on those sensing mechanisms are the things that ground our planning in the reality. And also when we think from a planning perspective is to move away from the single trajectory planning, uh, you know, the use of, of, of scenario planning, of, of scenario thinking, the use of things like design thinking all forces us away from, you know, the convergent part of the thinking process and forces us to the, the divergent part of the thinking process. And I think where we will find a lot of value is in the diversity, in, in, in the diversity and the inclusion. A friend of mine always says, hey, diversity is being asked to the dance. Inclusion is actually dancing. So I think what we have to do is we have to create the opportunities both to be invited to the dance and then actually performing the dance. Mm -hmm.